Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. You are learning with Dr. Shobha Nikam. In this video, I'll talk about the most important topic in VLSI or in design for testability. So it is built in self test. So testability is all about testing of chips before we deliver them to the customers. It is not about testing of our code or syntax error checking. It is about testing of our ICs for all possible faults present in the chip. So which faults can be present in the chip? See chips are very tiny. Millions of transistors are present in the chip. So it is possible that any transistor is continuously open or any transistor is short circuited or any pin is stuck to one or stuck to zero that is shorted to VDD line or ground line because chips are very small. So our aim is to identify all such faults present in the ICs and for that we use various design for testability methods. WIST is or built in self test is one of those methods and it is very very important. So let's talk more about it. So before we start about beast, you should know need of beast. So chips contains very large number of transistors, millions of transistors. The task of testing such a chip to verify correct functionality is extremely complex and it is very time consuming. So correct functionality means if I have AND gate, its correct functionality is for 0, 0, I'll get 0, for 0, 1, I'll get 0, for 1, 0, 0, and for 1, 1 only I should get 1. But for 1, 1, if I am getting zero, it means some fault is present in my chip because I am applying one one. I should get one, but I am getting some other value. So for that, we must test our chips. So the appro approximate cost of detecting fault at the board level, board level means after putting our chip in the board, it's 10 times more as compared to chip level testing. And the cost increases tenfold from board level to system level. So it is always better to test our ICs at chip level. A widely accepted approach to deal with the testing problem is built in self-test capability. It increases controllability and observability. So testability means ability to test my chip. So how I'll test my chip? Suppose I am testing simple AND gate again, I should apply some inputs and that means I am controlling my inputs, I am applying test vectors 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, any value. So those are called as test vectors and I am applying those test vectors, it means I am controlling inputs of AND gate and that is called as controllability. And after applying those inputs, what I am doing, I am checking my output and that checking of output is called as observability, whether I am able to observe my output or not. This is simple example of AND gate, but for complex circuits, primary inputs are externally available, but internally inputs and outputs are not externally available. So we need to set primary inputs in such a way that our expected inputs will be 1 or 0 as per our requirement. So because of use of built-in self-test, now we don't need any external testing equipments. We are not going to put our IC in some equipment. We have testing inside our chip. So introduction to BEAST, built-in self-test is a powerful design for testability technique used for VLSI circuits for testing of faults. It enables a circuit to test itself without any external test equipment. These contents are similar to previous slide only. Used widely in VLSI circuits to reduce dependency on automatic test equipment. It improves reliability and it enables infield testing and early fault detections. It improves reliability and it lowers the cost. This is the beast architecture. This architecture is very simple. See, when you are testing something, you need to apply inputs and those inputs are called as test vectors. So you must have 
pattern generator pattern generator means test vector generator which will generate patterns and we will apply those patterns to our chip then after pattern and to control all these operations we need beast controller so job of beast controller is it manages overall test flow then next is pattern generator so it will generate pattern let's say for and gate exhaustive pattern generation it will generate all uh, expected patterns 00011011 and then it will apply it to circuit under test or device under test so this is my chip after that my ic will generate some output of course for 11 my and gate will generate 1 if it is not faulty if it is faulty it will generate 0 so all those inputs will get generated for the patterns whichever patterns i'll apply accordingly i'll get the output then comes signature signal analyzer or signature analyzer it's not signal analyzer it's signature analyzer then signature analyzer will compact that response of course in upcoming slides i'll explain each and every block in details and then if i'm getting correct the generated signature is same as stored signature then my ic will pass otherwise it will fail so you just need to remember you will have to apply some inputs and you will have to check whether you are getting correct output or not and to control all these operations we need beast controller then for generation of test vectors or test patterns multiple testing methods are available so first method is exhaustive or pseudo exhaustive testing then pseudo random testing and deterministic testing so let's start with exhaustive or pseudo exhaustive testing see its name itself indicates pseudo exhaustive or exhaustive exhaustive means it will generate all possible test vectors like for and gate it will generate 0011011 all test vectors if i have ten four inputs to my circuit it will generate 2 raised to 4 like 0000 to 1111 total 16 test vectors this exhaustive pattern generator will generate advantages of this approach is that all irredundant faults can be detected as it is generating all test patterns so it will be, it is a, a, easy to identify all the faults but when n is large the test application time increases even with high clock speeds even if clock speed is very high then also this time increases because see if my input n is equals to 100 or 200s then 2 raised to 200 so many patterns will get generated so testing time will get increased so this exhaustive pattern generation is not feasible not suitable for complex circuits so it is suitable for inputs up to 25 then comes pseudo exhaustive so pseudo exhaustive will do what if i have let's say four inputs it will divide entire circuit into smaller components so instead of four external inputs what i'll have two inputs to one block and another two inputs to another block so for this block i'll generate two raised to two that is four patterns and for another block it will again generate two raised to two that is four patterns four plus four are eight but if i'll have to generate for total four inputs then number of patterns are 16 so in this way pseudo exhaustive testing will reduce the number of patterns then comes pseudo random testing so in pseudo random pattern generation it is their algorithms that generate sequences of bits that appear random but are actually deterministic meaning they follow a specific and repeatable pattern and pseudo random pattern generation generally we prefer this in beast it uses linear feedback shift resistors lfsr so it uses shift resistors with feedback which produce a sequence based on seed value and a feedback polynomial so it generates limited and required sequences then comes deterministic testing 
so as its name suggests it generates specific test patterns for circuit under test in a predictable and repeatable manner ensuring comprehensive fault coverage so it generates predictable inputs and repeatable in repeatable manner this approach contrast with random pattern generation this is it generates deterministic pattern whereas random pattern generator will generate random patterns so it is exactly opposite to pseudo random pattern generation then they are designed these pattern gener this pattern generation method or these patterns are used when we know the faults so for stuck cat faults transition faults or for part delays these pattern generations we use then signature analysis as i told you after applying inputs circuit will generate some output then how to compare that output so first step is response collection as the test patterns are applied to circuit it outputs generate a stream of binary data in response so signature signature generation or compaction this output stream is fed into a specialized hardware circuit called as signature analyzer so it is applied to signature analyzer and it will compact that signature and then this into much smaller signature and then this reduced signature will get compared with the already stored signature and based on that faults will get detected then there are two types of built in self tests we prefer one is logic based or sometimes or generally referred as l based it tests combinational as well as sequential circuits so basic difference between them is in combinational circuits output depends on present inputs only no memory element is required whereas in sequential circuit memory element is required so logic based means it tests combinational circuits as well as sequential circuits and then comes memory based or m based it is specially designed to test embedded memories so logic based the previous diagram is of of logic based only it uses linear feedback shift resistors for pseudo random pattern generation so patterns will get generated first so you need to remember we need to generate patterns we need to apply those patterns to our circuit under test circuit under test will give us some output we need to co compact that output that is called as signature analysis and then we can we will decide whether ic is faulty or not faulty then fault coverage is enhanced by generating large number of patterns as we apply more and more number of patterns when we ask more and more number of questions then only we will uh, be able to judge the person similarly here also when we apply more and more number of patterns we'll test our ic effectively responses compared using multiple input signature register and commonly used in microprocessors as six and in socs l based logic based then comes memory based or m based so it is used for testing of embedded memories like sram dram or flash memories it involves a controller generating memory specific test patterns so here it generates memory specific test patterns and they are then applied to memory cells then data is read then we read data from memory cells and compared with expected values to log faults then in few m based technologies optional built in self repair can use fault information to replace faulty cells with spares so if i am expecting one in one cell but if i am getting zero then what i'll do i have spare values so i'll replace that faulty value and i'll put the actual value then common m based algorithms includes checkerboard various march algorithms and the serial march and checkerboard algorithm so l based is for testing of combinational circuits and sequential circuits and m based is for testing of memories advantages of based it reduces reliance on costly external test equipment we don't need any external equipment 
testing facility is present in chips it enables at speed testing under real condition so it is faster in field and online testing is possible it improves product reliability and reduces overall test cost challenges are area overhead of course our checking circuitry is present inside ic so it will consume some area of the chip our aim of vlsi is aim is <coughs> to fit millions and millions of transistors in single chip or more and more functionality in single chip but now we need to reserve some area for testing facility then during test mode power consumption also increases then test coverage may not be 100% for complex circuits and design complexity increases with advanced beast techniques applications are used in safety critical systems like automotive and aerospace aerospace widely applied in microprocessors and socs and essential for embedded memory testing in modern vlsi designs i hope this is useful to you uh, do share it with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching